A higher price tag in makeup doesn't always mean higher quality. I'm about to be presented with pairs of mystery foundations, and we'll have to try to guess which one is more expensive. To do this, I'll be conducting a series of tests. It's pure chaos. And we'll see if the standards I have for quality matches their price tag. Let's try some stick foundations. Foundation A, first appearance, it has a nice creamy texture. There is some very slight separation on top. Not sure if that is sweating or if the technical term is cineresis where you see some of the liquid pooling on top. We don't want sweating because if it's sweating, that means your formula is kind of breaking down and that's not a hallmark of a quality foundation. So this stick is a little bit more homogenous or um, uniform, but I already noticed some cracking. Kind of gives me the impression that when I apply this, it might be dragging on the skin because there's not enough emollients or cushion in the formula to keep it together. First swatch is pretty good. It feels like a very soft crayon going across the face. Ideally, when you're blending out a stick foundation, you wanna use a stiff brush. When I'm evaluating a stick foundation, what I'm looking for is to see how well it melts into the skin and blends in. The more smooth and even it is, the higher the quality. So this one blends out pretty well. This one feels a bit stiffer upon contact with my skin. Still soft, but not quite as smooth. And it blends out pretty well, but there is a little bit more drag to it. If the foundation is draggy, then the foundation is in control instead of you. And if it's too draggy, it's gonna look patchy at best or cakey at worst. And nobody wants a cakey or patchy foundation. It's 2022, we can do better. So far, they both look pretty good. I like the slight glow of foundation A a bit more. Not quite as matte, but it doesn't have to be, you know? This is a stick foundation. You get different finish options. Foundation B is a bit more matte, and again, it's a, it was a slightly stiffer to apply. I had to work it in a little bit more, but still pretty good. So now we're going to do a melting point test. The purpose of this test is to evaluate how well these foundations can hold up in a hot car. So if you're spending good money on a foundation, last thing you want to do is it to be flushed down the drain and sitting on your seat when you come back home or get off of work. It should be able to melt upon contact with the skin, but also it shouldn't melt to the point of it melting in your car. And according to some studies, a hot car can exceed 130 degrees Fahrenheit on a hot summer's day. So now I've taken it off the hot plate because that's all the heat that was needed to get it to start melting. So let's check the temperature. 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Foundation B. It is at the same temperature, 120, but it isn't completely melted. Even though foundation A didn't hold up as well under the melting point test, I still think it's a higher quality foundation because it had the smoothest application, a gorgeous finish, and it still withstood high temperatures that most cars get on a hot summer's day. The 130 Fahrenheit uh, threshold we were going for is for extreme conditions as if you were in Phoenix or in the desert. Now let's look at the price. $48 for foundation A and $30 for a foundation B. So these are both, I would say, mid-tier foundations because you can get, of course, far cheaper ones. You know, it ultimately comes down to the performance. And this one performed better, had the most beautiful finish, and I can see why this one won out in the end. So foundation A is actually silicone based, and that's worthy of note because silicone is known for having a silky, spreadable finish on the skin. The main ingredient in foundation B is caprylic capric triglyceride, which is known for having a draggy finish, and that shows in how it applied to the skin. So B had a higher melting point, but that doesn't mean it needed to be draggy. The dragginess mainly comes from the first ingredient being a very dry filling emollient on the skin, compared to A using silicones that feel nicer, they have a better glide, and they have a nice silky finish to them. So these two appear to have the same type of finish, just looking at the brush. First impression, it's a relatively creamy formula, which is pretty rare for powder. This one seems to have a little bit more coverage and still has a creamy application. Again, not too powdery or dry where it's clinging to any dry patches or fine lines. This lets me know that both of these formulas have a good amount of emollients or oil-based ingredients that helps it glide on the skin. And it also helps it when it's being pressed so it doesn't crumble too much when you drop it or if you hit it against the surface. 
What I'm looking for in these types of foundation is how durable the compact is because with pressed powders, you're carrying it around in your purse because it's convenient or in your car and oftentimes it can break. So now for some fun, we're going to first start off with what's called a drop test. Now this test is usually done on all types of pressed powders. It's done to ensure that the product can withstand uh, shipment or you accidentally dropping the product. To do this test, we drop the product from 12 inches two to three times. If it breaks the first time, it's considered a failure of the drop test, meaning it's not a durable product. And if we're looking for a high quality powder, we don't want it to break. You're spending good money on this product. Still intact. Drop test number two. So as you can see, there is some slight breakage along the perimeter, but still largely intact, which is pretty good for two drops at 12 inches. And now for drop number three which is usually used as a worst case scenario. There is some slight cracking towards the top, but the center is still largely in place. This is a very usable powder, even after dropping it three times at one feet height. Now let's play with foundation B. Again, here's the first drop. It looks largely intact. The compact itself is still completely intact. Oh, it didn't break. It actually looks pretty good. I don't see any large separation besides a few speckles of powder that came off and the perimeters are still intact. Without a doubt, I feel like foundation B is the higher quality between the two because even upon initial application, it had the creamier consistency and finish. In addition, it withstood the most number of drops. Compared to foundation A, that still had a nice coverage and finish, but a little bit more basic and it failed after drop test two, where it started to crumble a little bit more at the center. Now let's see the prices. $35. A is $11. Now I will say they're both worth their price. A still gave you good coverage. It still gave you a creamy finish, not as creamy, but really good for $11. You just have to be mindful about dropping it. So this is one of those cases where you actually would get what you're paying for. $35 is still a really good price point because it feels luxurious. When you're spending more than $20 on a foundation, you should also get a good experience when applying it. The next category we're going to test are blurring foundations. So first thing I notice is that B is soaking up all the way into the brush. A is kind of just sitting on top. Now when it comes to blurring foundations, the hallmark of a quality one is one that can blur the appearance and minimize the appearance of pores and wrinkles without causing flashback. When you're using your camera's flash, does it cast back a white cast or ashy look on your face. That usually comes from the optical blurring pigments in the foundation, usually made of silica. Now I'm going to try both on my face to see how well it blurs any imperfections. And so far I don't see much blurring. Even if the coverage is sheer, it should still have enough of the optical blurring pigment, silica or something like it. And it works by diffusing the light around the skin so it looks blurry. The application of this one isn't as smooth, and it seems to blur the area around the skin a bit better than foundation A. So far, it's too soon to tell definitively which one I would say is the higher quality, but off of the swatches alone, it seems that B has slightly more blurring power than foundation A. B is also a bit more matte. That tracks because silica, the main ingredient that blurs foundation, tends to be mattifying. Now we're going to evaluate the quality of the formula by performing a flashback test. We live in a digital age where we're constantly using our phones and there's always a flash on it. And you might have seen pictures of celebrities on the red carpet with patches of white powder under their eyes or on their chin. And that's from either setting powder or blurring foundation that wasn't properly blended in or just a bad formula. So I'm not noticing flashback from either of these two foundations, which is a great thing. But as far as blurring, the blurring effect is a little bit more prominent when there is flash photography on the photo. And judging off of that, it looks like foundation A is a little bit more ashy gray. Foundation B has a softer focus, meaning you can see less of the pores, less of the ice pick scarring. I believe foundation B is the higher end and the more expensive because it offered a little bit more soft focus and blurring qualities that comes from the light diffusion of its ingredients. Foundation B is $89 and foundation A, $20. Not surprised, just from the flash photography alone, you can see foundation B blurred any wrinkles and hair follicles a lot more than foundation A. And ultimately you want a blurring foundation to feel like a in-person filter. Once you have a hard flash 
of light on your skin. Every imperfection is like magnified and this is why it's often used in like a um, studio setting for movies that are shot in 4K because you need that type of foundation to soften any imperfections that might be magnified with a HD or 4K camera. So the second ingredient in Foundation B is the Soft Focus Microsphere Powders. Whereas the only light diffusing ingredient I can point out in sample A is trimethyl uh, siloxy uh, silicate. Uh, glass sand-like surface and glass is very shiny. Sand can also blur pores. That's where silica comes from. It comes from sand, but it's not quite silica and it's further down on the ingredient list. Next, we're going to evaluate longwear foundations. Foundation B is definitely a thinner formula. Foundation A has a thicker consistency to it. Let's do a smudge test with some cotton rounds to see how much product each cotton round can pick up uh, foundations A and B with one swipe. The most important characteristics of a good quality longwear foundation are whether or not it's smudge proof or smear proof, as well as how water resistant or waterproof it is. This comes in handy if you live in a hot, humid, muggy environment, or if you just sweat a lot because sweat can cause some foundations to roll off. There is some slight transfer, but the coverage is still largely intact on my wrist. Foundation B has less transfer, still going across with my finger, there is far less pickup compared to foundation A. Foundation B appears to have outperformed foundation A regarding transfer resistance, and this still offered more coverage in general than foundation A. Now I'm going to apply both foundations to my face and then test it with a facial steamer that's going to gauge how it could perform in a humid, sweaty environment. Now let's use the facial steamer, making sure it's not too hot before bringing this close to my face. Feels like a sauna over here. Now that my face is feeling like the Everglades, it's time to take two paper towels and press it to my face to evaluate how water resistant both foundations are. Hmm. Not much transfer except along the area around my jawline. Also looks pretty good. Again, a bit of transfer from where I pressed it against my jaw. I believe B is the higher quality foundation because it had the superior coverage while still offering water resistance and smudge resistance. Now let's look at the prices. B is $48. Foundation A, $13.49. For a foundation that has supreme coverage while still offering water resistance and smudge resistance, I definitely think this is worth nearly $50. However, A is still a really good foundation. It had really good water resistance. The only detriment to it was that it had very sheer coverage, but it built up into a nice natural finish. So I definitely think this is a good steal for the price. One similarity I'll note in the ingredients in both of these is they both have film forming polymers. This is important because the film formers serve two functions. They help block water out, as well as forming a tight film that locks the makeup in place, kind of like a setting spray. Foundation B uses trimethyl siloxy silicate, which is commonly found in matte lipsticks, and that's how they stay transfer resistant. A also has a film former, kind of a film former, polypropyl sil sesquioxane that has like a cushion silky feel to it that explains why it still had like a good high quality texture to it. Some formulas absorb into the bristles more than others. If you're paying $80 for a full coverage foundation, you don't want half the product to be absorbed by the applicator because you're wasting that money. I'm gonna do a small arm swatch. As you can see, it has a relatively smooth and even application, but it dries really quickly. It's already starting to set on my wrist. And the coverage, once smoothed out, it's kind of medium and sheer. One reason you don't want foundations to set too quickly is because it can gather and bunch in dry spots and wrinkles and fine lines, and you don't want that, especially out of a foundation you're paying good money for. And this usually comes down to the solvents used to disperse the pigments. They're called volatile compounds, and most modern matte foundations use an ingredient called isodotacane, which dries really quickly and evaporates from the skin, which we want, but you don't want that to happen within five minutes because that gives you time to do your whole face and not have it look cakey. Now we're gonna test foundation B. Mm, that one has some nice opacity to it. Opacity being how much coverage it gives. The texture is very creamy. I associate creamy and cushiony with higher quality 
but as a matte foundation, you eventually want it to dry down, but this one seems to offer a little bit more play time, which is great because I will be able to do my whole face in a reasonable amount of time before it sets and locks in place. So I would assess, based off of the wrist alone so far, that this one is the higher priced foundation. Now we're going to apply foundation A to the skin. So the color of this is reading a little bit orange, at least in this um, mirror. High quality foundation should never be orange or gray. Our undertones are golden, yellow, red, pinkish, never ashy gray and tan orange. And the coverage is shearing out a lot. It's not really covering any of the fine lines or pimples I have on my face. This is a foundation you have to work really quickly with before it sets and that's not something you want. I'm not the biggest fan of this foundation. As you can see, like it even pulled some of the um, <laughs> bristles off the brush just from trying to get this to blend in all the way. So far, I'm not noticing any oxidation for this shade, which is another plus. If you're looking for a high quality foundation, you should never have to worry about it shifting or oxidizing in color or shade. Foundation B seems to offer more coverage. It's covering the little speckles left from my beard when I shaved and it also has a smoother application. I don't have to drag the brush as hard. I can probably stipple this on, which is nice because that gives you more variety because everybody has their preference with how they apply their foundation and the more options a product gives you, the better the quality. So now it's time for me to guess which one is more expensive. There are a lot of things that go into determining a foundation's price tag from packaging to marketing to general branding but I can't see any of that information. I can only go off of the quality. I believe foundation B is the higher end or more expensive of the two because it had more even coverage. It did not set too quickly or gather in fine lines. It still had a natural skin-like tone to it. It wasn't orange, it wasn't ashy. It was slightly darker, but that's okay. It just has a more um, elegant, satiny finish on the skin compared to foundation A. Hmm, $7.99. And foundation A, $42. I do not think foundation A is worth the money given how draggy the application was and the coverage was less than that of foundation B. That being said, foundation B still had the nicer coverage and the nicer texture compared to foundation A. But let's look at the ingredient list to figure out why that might be. So the second ingredient in foundation A is isodotacane, which I mentioned earlier as a volatile organic compound that allows the foundation to set. And the more isodotacane in a formula, the faster a foundation dries, which could be a good thing, but it can also cause it to cake up and bunch up in your skin before you get enough time to blend it out. So it's an even non-cakey coverage. Whereas the second ingredient in foundation B is cyclohexasiloxane, which is slightly less volatile than isodotacane. Foundation A definitely has a lot more ingredients that should give it a nicer texture, like a couple of polymers that give it cushion. I did not feel that in either my wrist or uh, jawline test, but it does explain why it's a more expensive formula, at least at face value from the ingredients alone. But in terms of practice, that wasn't the case. I would still pick foundation B over foundation A. It does go to show you that quality and price point aren't always correlated. 